Having grown up just steps from Kendall Square, I can tell you firsthand that Cambridge has come a long way from its old manufacturing days to being one of the world's most innovative cities. The Cambridge Chamber of Commerce is proud to recognize several innovative visionaries that call Cambridge home. These large and or small businesses, educational institutions, and nonprofit agencies are having a big impact in Cambridge and beyond. The impact is both local, helping one person at a time, and global, advancing life-changing solutions to some of the world's most pressing challenges. Now let's hear from the visionaries that we are honoring. Jacob Knowles, the Chief Sustainability Officer at BR Plus A Consulting Engineers. The project is originally started as 325 Binney Street as a core and shell speculative lab project for Alexandria Real Estate and eventually became the Moderna headquarters that we know today as Moderna saw this exciting opportunity to be use this building as their future home. But the team of course began with Alexandria Real Estate but they put together uh, first an architect so MDBJ uh, is the architect on the project and they then build a whole team of consultants that work together so BR plus A is one. We do the MEP, mechanical electrical plumbing systems in the building. The team and the project overall, I think, has made a big impact for the city of Cambridge and that affects a lot of people that live here and, and the region beyond because we know that we need to move towards carbon neutral. We know that, that carbon emissions are, have a huge impact on our environment. And that in particular for cities that are right on the coast like Cambridge, that matters a lot. We need to be able to manage all of our kids' futures in a better way. There's this new thing that's starting to develop in the market in Europe, which is to use the exhaust air as a source for heat. Because a lab building, you're always bringing in fresh air and exhausting it out. So let's take that warm exhaust air, instead of capturing some of it, let's capture almost every bit of energy before it leaves the building. None of this could happen if we didn't have the inspiration from Andy Reinach and Michelle Lauer and others on the Alexandria team, like personally taking a stake and saying, all right, we're gonna do something new and innovative here that really makes a difference. My name is Jay Sieben Morgan. I'm a design partner with NBBJ Architects. First of all, it's an incredibly unique building within Cambridge and setting many high standards for new buildings, I would say that will come in the future, being the most energy efficient lab building in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Buildings are only as good as the client that you have is, is really important as an architect. And your projects, you know, you push a vision about a design idea, but it, it actually works back and forth. Present a design to the client, they respond to it. But what was interesting in this situation is Alexandria kept pushing us harder and harder to do something more unique with this building. I think the project in general it, it kept picking up momentum of kind of aspirations about how energy efficient it was going to be an all electric building, ideally, uh, and how we might think about that in different ways. So, very respectful, very responsible in how they would respond to uh, community concerns, which, which is pretty unique when it comes to uh, somebody building a, a project of this size right next to residential communities. Because anytime you build a building of this scale, everybody becomes very sensitive about how it's going to affect their neighborhood. Things like traffic, uh, pedestrian uh, movement, security. Alexandria knew from the beginning that they had to be very kind of positive and proactive about the, how they handled this in a very smart, sensitive way to the community. My name is Marcy English. I'm Vice President of Biopharma Development at Estellas. And what we know from data is that women also experience different aspects of health that are very unique to women. It's related to both diseases and outcomes from a scientific and a biologic perspective. One of the things that we also know is that there are some stigmas around uh, talking about women's health, and that can also prevent women from having the best outcomes that they possibly can when seeking health care. 
And this especially applies to aging and menopause. There have been surveys done where women aren't comfortable talking about menopause publicly. And so one of the things that's really important to us at Estellas is being able to use data and our resources to elevate that dialogue. A woman who is black or Hispanic, even though they have more severe symptoms, both in frequency and severity, they're not as well documented in their uh, healthcare journey. And they're also not addressed from a therapeutic perspective. There's a real gap when we talk about women of color. In addition to being uncomfortable about this dialogue around women's health, there's also this additional stigma and barriers. I'm Shana Mancuso, and I'm a medical director within the Medical Affairs Organization in Women's Health at Estellas. A single hot flash can last anywhere from one minute to five minutes and may occur frequently or reach a point of severity that it impacts not only a woman's sleep, their work productivity, their mood or cognitive function as well. It can affect everything from their work productivity to their relationships. And we also know that there are health-related impacts as well. So women in menopause experience higher risks of not only cardiovascular disease, but also bone loss and fracture and epigenic aging. We also know they can experience sleep impairment and mood disturbances as well. In a very interesting study was recently conducted by the Mayo Clinics and it was published earlier this year and it estimated that the cost associated with lost work productivity due to menopause symptoms in the United States is approximately $1.8 billion a year. Roughly 15% of participants in the study said that they either had to cut back on hours or miss work due to menopause symptoms. We recently, in May of this year, gained approval for Vioza, which is a non-hormonal therapy to treat vasomotor symptoms or hot flashes associated with menopause. It works very uniquely on an area of the brain called the hypothalamus, which controls the body's temperature control center. By interacting with that temperature control center, um, we reduce that frequency and severity of hot flashes, resulting in, in good outcomes for women. This is really an honor for us to be recognized and really to be part of the Cambridge community. There's so much innovation going on here and Estellas is delighted to be part of it and to continue to be in this community uh, improving healthcare. Um, hi, my name is Giselle Vélez. I am the Associate Director for Scientific Workforce Diversity at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. So the team that's being honored is the STEM Engagement and Inclusion team at the Broad Institute, and they're being recognized for all the hard work, uh, specifically for the summer programs. We have a summer research program for undergraduates and a summer research program for high school students. Our programs have helped improve the lives of others, including our Broad employees and the community uh, just by the mission of them. Our programs are designed to help increase representation in STEM disciplines, specifically research, and our programs provide access, opportunities for a lot of students to come to a research intensive institution and work side by side with scientists and have their own projects and be able to really experience what it means to be a scientist with the hopes of them to see themselves and have a career in science in the future. The STEM engagement and inclusion team at the Broad really uh, exemplifies the visionary spirit just by our goal of serving the community, one with the research that helps advance biomedicine but also our work with our programs of really creating opportunities for scientists and students to work together and allow our community to be a part of the work that happens at the Broad that otherwise they wouldn't really have access to. My name is Rachel Gesterman. I'm the Operations Manager at the Broad Institute in the Office of STEM Engagement and Inclusion. The Office of STEM Engagement and Inclusion serves students as young as middle school and as old as post-baccalaureate level. And our goal is really to provide access and exposure to what a career in scientific research could be like. The Office of STEM Engagement and Inclusion is a team of seven individuals who serve students um, as young as middle school and as old as post-baccalaureate level. 
Uh, one of our main programs are our two summer research programs that serve high school students and undergraduates primarily from the, the local greater Boston community for the high school program and for the undergrads, they come from all over the country. The team really has a big impact on both students' lives and the lives of the scientists who are volunteering to interact with those students. Um, so for many of the students who come participate in our summer research program, it might be their first time ever doing scientific research. Um, and so it's a really great opportunity to sort of see themselves as scientists and get hands-on with a real authentic project um, and start to understand what a career in this space could be like. Um, and with the scientists who are, who are volunteering to mentor these students in these research programs, um, our team does provide a lot of support around effective mentoring strategies and really trying to make it a professional development experience for them as well. This award means to us uh, recognition of all the hard work and kind of getting validation and support from the community that the work that our team does to expose students to STEM careers is something that Cambridge as a whole is committed to and wants to really support and see growing. So it's really great for our team to see our hard work being recognized, but most importantly, um, having the students being showcased. The team that's being honored by the Cambridge Chamber of Commerce is the Loop Lab. The Loop Lab is a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering underestimated communities such as women, people of color, to entering the media arts industry. So that includes filmmaking, audio production, as well as photography. And so these industries are emerging and they're growing, they're hiring. However, there have been historical barriers that have prevented many people of color from gaining access. And so we're really working with other organizations and, and also uh, academic centers to not only address the inequities that exist by paying the students to learn these skills that will make them more hireable and employable in the fields, but we're also working together with the industries themselves to try to help mentor, but also be an activist, be an advocate uh, to, to really promote diversity, equity, inclusion in these spaces. Hi, I'm Anna Montano and I am a current apprentice at the Loop Lab. Um, the Loop Lab improves the lives of others by in, like including everyone into a community that they didn't have before because unfortunately for a lot of minorities and um, people of color we don't have these groups or outlets to put our creativity and they provide that safe space. We are essentially showing the world that we have these talents that are kind of sh like shut away and brushed under the rug because we don't have the representation in the media arts world um, and so People seeing the impacts that people of color and minority groups have in terms of like their creativity and actually having the access to put that out there, it's showing people that the minds and abilities of people of color and minorities go beyond, far beyond what we're limited to. Uh, my name is Lucas Braagas. I work for the Loop Lab and I'm the Academy Manager there. We provide holistic training in like the simplest way to answer that. Uh, we provide an opportunity for people to learn a lot of the media arts skills, so learning how to use cameras and microphones and create projects that they want um, and, and all the skills for that. Um, but I think the act of changing lives is never something that's like you're done with. It's always ongoing. We are improving lives instead of having improved them. That's how I'd like to see it. Everything we do is creative. The students that come to us, the people that come to us, whether employees or whatever, they are creative already. Our job is to help make them creative people that are ready to work and be paid for their, for their already high level of creativity. I've never worked at a team as dedicated and as committed to our sole and primary mission as I have with the Loop Lab. So I want to shout out my team because what I do, what uh, Chris, our executive director does, what all of our students are able to do is only possible because of everybody. The Loop Lab has really thrived through our partnerships and so when we have organizations like the Cambridge Chamber of Commerce honoring us it really sends a signal. Um, you know our mission is really connecting young adults and folks through our programs to the businesses and organizations that we're working with actively. Actually come on y'all say hi to all the people out there 
all the folks in the gala, <laughs> and all the folks you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> so behind the camera, behind the soundboard, uh, we are here and we are thriving. Hi, I'm Christoph Pedain and I'm the business leader of hospital patient monitoring for Philips. Maintaining awareness of a clinical situation is a vital part of clinicians' work in the operating room as they respond to changes in the patient status and deliver their high quality care through that. Situational awareness in the OR is the perception of the current environment. It means having an accurate understanding of what is happening around the patient, what is happening right now, and based on this, what's likely to happen next. In today's clinical environments and especially operating rooms, there is a constant stream of ever-changing information. And that means keeping track of all the data that's being captured, that's being processed during a procedure, and that alone is a highly demanding task. Information overload combining with heavy workloads, fatigue and distractions can impact a clinician's ability to gain a fully comprehensive picture in a timely manner. And that's the reality for anesthesiologists and nurse anesthetists who are confronted with large volumes of information. Research shows that over 80% of anesthesia-related incidents are caused by the lack of situational awareness. Our visual patient avatar was designed to address this very issue. Hi, my name is Tammy Beaulieu. I'm the Global Product Manager for Clinical Decision Support Solutions here at Philips for Hospital Patient Monitoring. The visual patient avatar innovation was driven by two anesthesiologists who are also pilots. One day after checking their digital instrumentation panel, they realized that if a patient data could be visualized in a similar way, these insights could revolutionize the care that they could give. In partnership with Philips and these doctors challenged the status quo, which has resulted in the creation of this cutting edge technology and the innovation has been continuously refined to meet the customer needs. Visual Patient Avatar translates information from Philips IntelliView patient monitors into an image-based representation of the patient's body using an avatar that displays color, shape, and animation along with their vital signs. It is designed to help anesthesiologists and nurse anesthetists get a fast visual understanding of a patient's condition during a procedure. We found in the study that visual patient avatar was able to provide more information in three seconds than 10 seconds of conventional patient monitoring. The visual patient avatar is the latest example of the innovations that we are working on here in Cambridge at the Philips North America headquarters. The healthcare ecosystem that we've got here, the proximity to our customers and partners, the excellent talent base, that helps us live up to our purpose of improving two and a half billion lives per year by the year 2030. And that includes 400 million in underserved communities. We are very proud to be part of the Cambridge and Boston healthcare world. And we look forward to an even closer collaboration in the future, leading to more innovation and serving patients worldwide. I'm Meredith Tierney, Director of U.S. Corporate Social Responsibility and Community Relations for Sanofi at our Cambridge office. Sanofi has a long legacy of community relations here in the Cambridge area. Um, we work with partners dating back decades, uh, back to our Genzyme days, and we're honored to elevate three of our partnerships this year that we're celebrating milestone years with. At Sanofi, we are driven by the challenges facing society and the planet, and we chase the miracles of science to improve people's lives. Uh, to deliver on this promise to society, we foster strong, multifaceted partnerships with expert institutions across sectors and disciplines, and included in this vital ecosystem of innovators are our nonprofit partners. Hi, I'm Bonnie Bertolet. I'm the Executive Director of Science Club for Girls, and I am thrilled to be here to celebrate Sanofi. At Science Club for Girls, we foster excitement, confidence, and literacy in STEM for girls and gender expansive youth from underrepresented communities. Sanofi's long, deeply rooted commitment to giving back in Cambridge is strongly reflected in our partnership. Sanofi embodies the visionary spirit by looking ahead and planning for the future. They are investing in the future pipeline 
of skilled STEM workers that represent uh, diverse perspectives. Carl Nagy Kirschlin, I'm the executive director at Justice Start. They've worked closely with Justice Start to hire uh, graduates of our training programs and um, have uh, in, in, in the process, you know, changed, changed lives, but also made their company stronger uh, by making it more diverse. To an organization like Justice Start, the best partners are those that don't see a collaboration as charity, but rather see it as in their, their interest as well as in the community's interest. My name is Miriam Ortiz and I'm the Director of Education and Training at Just the Start. In terms of corporate citizenship can be sometimes performative and this is the opposite of that. There is true interest in the populations that we work with and uh, constant interaction with their team about how else we could collaborate. So I think that it's very worthy of the recognition that they're getting today. I'm Meg Ramsdell, Executive Director for Cambridge School Volunteers. We have partnered with Sanofi to bring our Reading Buddies program to the Fletcher Maynard Academy for the past 25 years. And each week they send a team of volunteers to read to first and second graders to help with reading fluency and comprehension. It embodies the visionary spirit, I think because, especially because 25 years ago is when Sanofi first made the commitment to work with us and provide volunteers. And it is, um, a pretty significant thing to make that kind of commitment and to acknowledge that sending volunteers to participate in the community in a way that isn't for, you know, doesn't have anything to do with their research or product they're producing, but that there is a benefit to participating like that in the community. On June 22, 2023, Sareptis Elevitis was approved for the treatment of ambulatory pediatric Duchenne patients aged four through five years with a confirmed mutation in the DMD gene. It is the first and only gene therapy approved for the treatment of Duchenne. Elevitis is the first of its kind. So Elevitis aims to slow or even halt the progression of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne is a muscle wasting disease. So the earlier we treat these boys, the better. Elevitis is a gene transfer therapy for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And so it's a unique therapy because it is, it aims to address the underlying root cause of the disease mechanism of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a mutation in the dystrophin gene. And so without this critical protein, the muscles start to deteriorate over, the, over time in a very predictable, sequential way. They are likely in a wheelchair in their early teen years. They're on a ventilator uh, in the later teen years. And the average age of death uh, in Duchenne is still in the 20s. And that's usually from uh, cardiac or, or pulmonary causes. I think what's visionary about Elevitus is the way that we get the gene into the human body. We use packages that are viruses to get the gene in, and Elevitus uses a different viral package than any other gene therapy. I think for the Duchenne community, Elevitus is hope. Uh, it's hope that the disease trajectory through therapy can be altered and that the disease can be slowed or stabilized and that patients' lives can be fuller for longer in terms of their, their abilities and what they can accomplish. It's about independence. It's about being able to maintain their individuality through really key years. Well, we've been forced to be visionary in some ways because this is one of the first one-time therapies, one-time gene therapies. It's a whole new modality. It's a whole new you know, paradigm. And it required really out-of-the-box thinking. So for Elevitus, we developed a unique and innovative supply chain. The supply chain group spent years developing the supply chain for this product. We interviewed doctors, pharmacists, to better understand how they want to treat this patient population. And with that, we developed a very unique supply chain that delivers the product exactly as they need it in the format in which they want. Duchenne is hard. It's a challenging um, adversary that we have as a company trying to, trying to change the nature and the course of this disease and help these patients 
is the hardest challenge imaginable. What has allowed us to succeed and execute so well in the launch is just this relentless, fearless commitment to the patients and this knowledge that every minute does matter for these patients. Don Sylvia, I'm the Vice President of Operations for Vicinity Energy in the Northeast. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about our E-Steam uh, transition at Kendall Station. Uh, it's a really exciting time to be in the energy business. Uh, Kendall Station has been around since the late 40s. Uh, but this transition that we're going through now to decarbonize the steam system and therefore all the, the cities of Cambridge and Boston is, is really exciting. I'm energized over this. We are able to reuse and reinvent existing infrastructure that already exists right and and just change that think about it differently so where we used to burn fossil fuel uh, to generate electricity we're now going to use clean electricity whether it's wind solar uh, hydro to uh, create the same product and and generate that use the same pipelines to distribute it to the customers uh, and have it consumed by the customers without them doing anything different uh, in their buildings patrick haswell Director of Business Development and Public Affairs for Vicinity Energy. Being a part of the District Energy System in Boston and Cambridge and having been here for 25 plus years and seeing the system decarbonized year after year, time after time, this has probably been one of the most visionary products that I've seen come to the District Energy System in Boston and Cambridge. The 60 to 70 million square feet that we currently serve are going to have the ability to transition to a carbon-free or, or net zero product that they currently would not have had the ability to do with a tremendous amount of asset infusion or the ability to upset their tenants. Hi, I'm Will Ashton, uh, Senior Director of Development at IQHQ. We chose to um, pursue eSteam in our developments for a few reasons. Um, initially, in planning the Fenway Center, which is our about a million square foot mixed use development uh, in Fenway, we were looking at a variety of options for heat generation. The traditional method is uh, through gas boilers, and but that has generates a lot of greenhouse gases on site. Um, by using electrically generated steam, they've future-proofed themselves to the greening of the grid to uh, reduce those greenhouse gas emissions, specifically in communities where those are generated, um, which we generally don't see in in the buildings where we're using that electricity. Hi, I'm Matt O'Malley. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer for Vicinity Energy. Now, when you think about the climate crisis, when you think about this existential threat that we're facing, you need to think big and you need to think boldly. And that's precisely what we're doing at Vicinity. When we launched eSteam, we are truly revolutionizing the way district energy systems can help buildings decarbonize. We've seen incredible leadership at the local level here in Cambridge, in Boston and beyond that's working with our businesses, with our customers, with our communities to make the cities healthier, to address decarbonization by lowering greenhouse gas emissions, by working for a stronger, more livable, more vibrant planet. And that's precisely what we are doing.